So I say um, this discussion, especially uh, as it concerns today's ongoing dialogue between Trinitarians and Unitarians, is the type of discussion that I say is well worth your effort to look into. I'm not saying you got to become an expert on what the Jehovah's Witnesses or Latter-day Saints or any other non-Trinitarian group teaches about the Spirit, but I'm simply saying that um, take some time um, out of your busy schedule uh, some day, some week, and just read an article or two about what other denominational aspects are concerning uh, Trinity and those types of discussions. And um, just be aware that the, these people could come knocking on your door, and they might not persuade you. You might say, no, I'll never be swayed. But who knows? They might persuade your wife or your husband or your children, right? Or your relatives. They might turn them, you know, you know before you know it, you hear the news, hey, did you hear that Uncle So and So became a, a Latter Day Saint. Hey, did you hear that that Aunt So and So uh, uh, joined the, uh, the 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 um, the Mormon Church down the street? She, she became a Jehovah's Witness, and you're thinking, what? She was raised as a Christian her whole life. She's a good good standing Baptist. Why did she become a Mormon? Why did she turn to that those cultic Christian groups? Ah, it's because perhaps she wasn't prepared. She didn't know what they what they believed, and so when they hit her with their theology and they were peddling their wares at you know at their doors at her door, uh, she was unprepared and she she considered it and it sounded pretty good. And next thing you know, she's going to their meetings and joining their church. So it can happen. All right. I'm not saying it's, it's going to happen every case, but uh, just follow along. Oops, didn't mean to do that. There we go. I say in my commentary, specifically in this paragraph section, what I want to do is to eventually discuss the Trinity theory of the modern Latter-day Saints, a.k.a. LDS, or the Mormons, right? So LDS, or Latter-day Saints, or Mormons. I understand the term Mormon is slightly pejorative, slightly offensive to Latter-day Saints, or LDS folks. Um, not all um, Latter-day Saints believers uh, take offense at the word Mormon, um, but some do, and so that's why I'm listing the, the different names there. And so I'm probably not just going to say the JWs or the Mormons because it sounds very negative, sounds very pejorative, sounds very condescending, uh, sounds very um, a, a slight bit inflammatory. Uh, you know, the JWs, the Mormons, this is about as bad as saying the Jews. We don't want to use terms that are openly offensive to people, uh, even if we disagree with their theology. So more often than not in the study, I'm going to say either the Latter-day Saints or LDS. Um, Mormon is there just for reference sake, but you guys understand what I'm trying to say there, okay? So we're going to look at the Trinitarian um, discussions as seen through the lens of social Trinitarianism. And social Trinitarianism is probably something you're not familiar with, but I already mentioned it in my study months ago, and so that's why I say it's a bit of a digression. We mentioned it uh, earlier on in probably part two of this paper two of this particular study. So if you're not familiar, you can go back there. Otherwise, you can just do a Google search for social Trinitarianism. Uh, but don't worry, we'll get to it eventually. Um, I say in my commentary, however, a quick Wikipedia take on Eastern Greek Orthodoxy beliefs is in order first. So it sounds like I'm going all over the place, but I'm not. There's actually an order to where I'm going to be going in this discussion. Why I started with Eastern Orthodoxy, excuse me, Eastern Orthodoxy, and then moved on uh, towards um, the Latter Day Saints discussions, and then into Social Trinitarianism. They kind of build on one another's uh, uh, the reason why I went in that direction. So.